Marvellous. Right. So um, I'm going to be looking. So last week I looked at Scott Naismith and um, that was really good fun because uh, he uses these amazing uh, rich colour schemes and things, which I've got down here on my desk at the moment. Uh, so you might have seen that I posted that on the. Oh, wow. Yeah, I posted that on the on the web on the on Instagram. I think it went on to Facebook as well. Um, so, yeah just amazing work that he does with all these beautiful colors textures as well in the foreground and a lovely sense of atmospheric perspective which is you know how the light um, uh, comes through the back of the mountains there and the colors change and become more subtle as you go back and more intense as you come into the foreground um, now uh, uh, I think before as well I showed you a video on uh, Kurt Jackson uh, so Kurt Jackson is this artist just here and he does these wonderful uh, landscapes where he goes out into the landscapes themselves and works plain air. Um, so he'll he'll work on canvases or he'll lay out the canvas on the beach or whatever he's doing uh, and then he uses everything uh, he throws everything at it basically lots of different materials and techniques he, he uses his feet <laughs> sometimes he'll use brushes obviously and um, he'll also do a lot of kind of loose kind of experimental splattering and sometimes collage on different materials he's even painted on things like blankets and things but one of the things I often recognize his work for apart from his style of course is the fact that he'll write down on his canvas or on his piece mm -hmm. something that he's seen on that occasion so he's got two bottling seals I think it says there or something like that mm -hmm. so uh, that adds a little sort of personal touch to the work which is I, I really I'm really quite keen on as well and then um, this this one, which I've specifically chosen to look at um, today, um, let's just see if I can. Yeah, it's the river one. So this one, um, and it's quite close to my heart, really, I suppose, because I love the river. Um, but you can see the mark making that he uses. He uses everything, like I said, from his hands to his feet. And uh, I use a toothbrush to create these splattery effects, which I'll be doing a little bit of today. Um, so I've taken that as my inspiration, that particular painting. Uh, and I really like the sense of light and the movement of the river going through there. And then the different kinds of marks in the foreground, which draw you into the picture, as well as the trees and the leaves and stuff. So that's all splattered to create that. That effect so I've chosen these two pictures just here which I've got on my um, screen on this page so I thought I would do this one uh, just here let me just uh, select that one yeah this one I thought I'd have a go at perhaps doing that one but um, I'm I'm thinking of changing my mind and doing a different one actually have the other one that I had on the screen a minute ago but I thought I would use this um, photograph that I just whipped off the internet uh, to um, use uh, to experiment really with some of these techniques so I may even use a palette knife in little areas of that um, but it's going to be a, a case of like let's see what happens um, so what I'll do first of all is I'm going to draw this picture out using a grid and then I'm going to use things like my um, my trusty toothbrush Ta -da! It's just here <laughs> my toothbrush and I've also got uh, one of the electric toothbrushes here that I'm going to use to make a few marks with as well on there um, as well as uh, perhaps a palette knife which I've yet to get out so that's the, the thing there that I've got. Now, I have got the video of Kurt Jackson. If anyone wants me to, would you like yeah, me to play yeah. that again? I can yeah. play that again. Yeah, I just happen to not have taken it off yet. So I'll play that for us. <laughs> I believe I'm Kurt Jackson. I've, I've always, always painted, painted, I've always drawn, drawn I've always done stuff, stuff like that. that. But combining that with my sort of respect and love for the natural world has meant that I've got this enthusiasm for creating something that is a response to the natural world and how we fit into it, how we are changing it, how we're affecting it, 
how nature, the natural world, affects us. My real problem is to choose what not to paint because basically everything out there is paintable. But I need more than that, I need a reason to paint it. It's rare that the projects just come out of nowhere. Normally they're ideas that have been back in my mind, an idea that's been building up for a little while. I refuse to have one way of working. The way I work is, is a combination of working on plein air and working in the studio. It can start in the studio and then go outside. It can start outside and work in, follow up with work in the studio. The work outside is obviously a very direct result of contact with nature or with my environment using um, my hands, using my feet, using um, different brushes, um, palette knives, chucking it on, scraping it off, putting it on again, pouring it on, washing it off. The elements are affecting me directly. The salt water, the mud, the vegetation, the insects, it all gets somehow combined into, into what I'm doing. Eventually getting to a situation I Either the weather's changing, the tide's moved on, but anyway, reaching a stage where I can't work it anymore. Taking it home, back to the studio. Sometimes, though, I'll start in the studio with an idea because there's nothing worse than starting with a white surface. So I'll build up some layers and, and work, you know, prepare it in a way. Then take it out, laying down collage onto a big unstretched piece of canvas, pouring on ink, acrylic, sometimes shellac, sometimes varnish. Letting that dry, putting some more on, letting it dry, eventually getting to a state where the canvas is largely hidden and there's a resemblance. Then getting out into the place I plan to work, unrolling that piece of canvas with that sort of preparation on it already and getting stuck in and see what happens. But working outside is, is far less controllable. So there's a lot more accidents, a lot more spontaneity. Exciting things tend to happen, especially if you put yourself in stupid places like on the edge of the cliff, on a rusty roof that might fall through. If you put yourself in a crazy place on a ship out in the ocean, then you're at the mercy of the elements or at the mercy of, of something else besides what's on inside your head and your hands. And so more exciting things tend to happen. But I want a big range, sort of an eclectic sort of mess of different mark making. I'm using layers of different media and I'm mixing different media together. So whether, whether we're talking acrylics, inks, varnishes, um, crayons, pastels, oil paint, and within each painting that's going to be a different um, proportion of one medium to another. So there's always a variety within a body of work but eventually trying to reach that point where basically I can't think of anything else to do to it. I can't change it in any way. And then I'm trying to find that point where I put the, the final full stop, the punctuation, you know, that's it. Ding, I've done it. I want to make exciting discoveries within each painting so that the next painting, it, I've moved on. There's always a sort of evolution of technique and um, result. If you've been working on something very big, then I might want to work on something very small, or if I've been working on one type of paint, then I might want to work on another type. By keeping that sort of diversity and variety going, I don't find I ever become stuck. Wonderful. There we go then. So, um, yeah. So we've got uh, Kurt Jackson as the inspiration for this week. Um, and we have talked about Kurt Jackson before, um, but it's just nice to have a little bit of a tryout with that today. Um, but if you need help with anything that you're already doing, of course, then please let me know and I'll uh, have a look at that for you too. So um, I'm going to start drawing out this um, image, I think. <laughs> I've got a different one now, so I'm going to put that on screen in a, in a second. Um, but this one, I just like the uh, perspective 
uh, in this particular photograph. So I'm going to uh, bring that one on to the screen. We've also got this nice details in the front and lots of smaller details and then this nice bit of perspective with the house um, alongside the river which I thought would be a nice subject to do um, and then we've got the reflections the details in the reflections too so I'm going to have a little bit of a play with that one today um, the other thing is uh, I was thinking of trying uh, one week uh, some oil pastel um, paintings as well so um, that'll be something to consider if you haven't got any um, you might want to get some but um, if you haven't got any and you want to continue with the painting that's absolutely fine but I'm gonna um, bring along some oil pastels uh, in the next few weeks uh, to try out as well and I'll talk a bit more about that when we get to it and perhaps find some artists that use those things too okay Amy, can we use yep. ordinary uh, you'll find that um, well I'm gonna you've got chalk pastels which are kind of dusty and oil pastels are kind of creamy but um, so you get different results uh, different mark making from um, different ones and because it's kind of a creamy texture oil pastel it kind of it's quite nice to to blend and scrape off and things but um, yeah if you want to do the chalk pastels um, or the the pastels that are kind of dusty and, um, as opposed to oily then um, yeah you can do that um, but I'll be showing you how to use the oil pastel so it's up to you okay okay get rid of that one get the other one so what medium are you using today jamie uh i'm just going to be using uh acrylics uh today uh, and i might bring in a few other things if i want to put some detail in uh so previously in my classes i've used um biros have nine things so i might do that um but i'm also thinking some color pencils as well would be quite good to do some yeah. finer details but um, for the most part, I'll be using the acrylics to do what I'm doing. OK. Yeah. So I'll start quite loosely to begin with uh, once I've um, drawn the picture out, um, applying patches of, of colour with the um, with the acrylics and then I'll start working back over it. So I've got a grounding to work with as well. Uh, that's my little that's the picture i'll be using as you can see it's a stock photo get rid of that bit there we go All right, so here we are then, um, starting off this um, painting of a riverside. And basically what we're doing first of all then is I've divided the photo into four sections, as you can see from the photograph I've got in my hands. And I'm using that as my grid in this painting. So um, you can see on the screen as well that there is also a um, painting by, um, Kurt Jackson up there as a little bit of a reference uh, for some of the techniques that I decided to try out during this lesson. So for this um, picture I was looking at the, for drawing it that is, I'm looking at the perspective, uh, you know, which direction the lines of the building and the river uh, go in. Uh, you can see that the perspective on the main uh, subject of the picture, the house there, on the right hand side has lines of perspective which go towards the left and center of the image or just past it 
Um, so all I've done really with this is draw out the larger main shapes, added a little bit of detail into the house and then got cracking with it really. Um, I'm working from the back of the picture forward so that a lot of the colours um, overlay each other as they come towards us in the foreground. So it acts as kind of a, a layered effect and gives it that sense of space as well. Um, I'm using uh, a little bit more white as you go further up to the back for these um, this area of underpainting that I'm doing. Um, so I'm using um, uh, some different greens. I'm going for a darker green over on the left hand side as you can see right now. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm in the trees here I'm modeling the trees a little bit to give them uh, to start to give them that 3D quality that we'll be looking for in the picture as well. Uh, in other words all the, the shape of the overall tree um, and then going into it a little bit later with some different techniques that perhaps Jackson, uh, Kurt Jackson would have used. Now I've already mapped out the reflections in the foreground here where the dark and the light shadows go. The important uh, thing to remember when you're doing um, when you're doing reflections is that good strong contrast is important between the sky and some of the shadowy areas of trees there in the in the water and also um, horizontal lines going across the plane of the watery area um, because as you probably know um, unless it's really really still the water distorts uh, the reflections so you have these horizontal lines cutting through any reflections or even distorting those reflections to create um, a sense of the water um, moving and the reflections of the um, buildings and the foliage around it. Um, also uh, one thing to remember as well is that often reflections can be a little bit darker than the actual uh, subject itself so like the house should be slightly darker in the water uh, than it is in reality on the side of the bank there. So the house itself is this lovely sort of orangey brick colour, which makes sense, but um, it has a kind of a glowing effect, which as the painting progresses, I lose a little bit. And, but that's OK, because it adds a little bit of depth when it gets darker, and then I paint back over it a bit later on to make it lighter again, or to give it this glowing quality with more of an opaque paint. So I'm being quite loose about the way that I map in everything at this point. And indeed, when I start going into some of the details, I still try to maintain some of that sort of uh, relaxed, um, experimental kind of um, approach to the way that I'm tackling uh, reflections and everything else in the picture. So it's a really lovely uh, study uh, to do because it has lots of different interesting elements in this photograph. Kurt Jackson offers a, us a lot of possibilities with experimenting as well. So I'm using my pencil to line up the windows with those that are in the water. Uh, and you can see I've used a slightly darker brown uh, in the water to start with. The reflections are starting to appear um, a little bit now. So this this uh, particular recording now that we're on is from the first week. This is actually uh, two weeks that we worked on this one. So it's about four hours altogether or just a bit less than that because we have introductions at the beginning of class as well on Zoom. <coughs> so we're adding a little bit more depth into the background and some different spaces and I'm filling out some areas that I hadn't done under painting on previously. In a little while I then start uh, to put in some mark making and techniques so I'm going to use a toothbrush and I'm going to use 
uh, some colour pencils and some other ideas that I've got sort of in there as well. Lots of stippling for the leaves obviously, drawing in some lines and so forth as well for tiles and bricks. So there you can see me using the brush to create marks and texture on the surface of the picture right now. And that's the toothbrush you just saw. So the surface is building up lovely now. You can see there's lots of stipples and the stipples are um, doing dark ones and the important thing to, is to have contrast between the dark and the light areas on the shape of the trees in the background there. So you can see the shadows are trying to give a little bit of form into the trees at the back. I'm using some lines. I often scratch with the back of my brush as well to soften down some of the marks that I've made, which I always find works quite well because you've still got the colour that you applied on the surface but yet then you've also got um, some scratched areas on there too, so for a bit of texture and the colour isn't so prominent either. Hmm. So I'm using um, colour pencil, one of my favourite materials to combine with acrylic because it goes very well on the surface of the acrylic itself. So you see now I'm starting to play around with ideas on the surface of the brick I've added a bit of yellow onto the top of there. Again, I'm scratching back with the back of my brush. And putting some scribbly marks in with my pencils as well. So I'm using a dark green and a dark blue to create that. So sometimes it's nice with the toothbrush to blur or make um, certain areas in the pictures a little bit indistinct as well. So they become a little bit more interesting or softer in places. So the, one striking thing about this photo was that the buildings had these nice sharp edges as you'd expect. And then we've got these lovely soft edges where they, because there's so many leaves growing around. So that contrast between the marks is uh, something to be picked up on. This is um, a little bit later on in the session, obviously now, and uh, I'm use, I've used a colour pencil to start putting in elements of the reflections in there. And I'm just stippling away again. bringing in some of the dark and shadowy areas and some of the form in the picture. Even putting in a bit more colour pencil as well. <clears throat> you probably just noticed there I was using my uh, finger just to move bits of paint around when I've applied them as well. Which I find really not satisfying to do in a way because, you know, you've got this tactile element that's touching your work rather than uh, it being on the end of a pencil. So we're on to the second sec section or session, I should say, already. And you can see I launched, I decided at this point that I wanted to continue as I uh, wanted the uh, painting to be. Uh, I'm using those photographs there as a kind of a mask, really, just masking off different areas of the picture. And I'm now masking off uh, another area of the picture. This was quite an interesting technique. I splattered uh, the water, um, some white onto the surface, and then I brushed it with the toothbrush. So I used a toothbrush to splatter it, and then I scraped some of those splatters across to get these kind of watery reflections in there. Uh, and this was me just talking, somebody asked about how do I do the trees and so forth. Uh, and I talked about adding volume and shape, modelling your trees. And then adding and applying the texture over the top. And of course you can paint the branches in as well. And then you can then um, soften those branches down. 
with some more splattering and stuff. So you can see there that I've um, done a little bit more on the water now. I'm just moving over to a different area of the painting. This was quite interesting. Uh, what I did here is I've seen Kurt Jackson do this as well. In some of his videos is you paint a little bit of the paper with white with paint, well white in this case, and you print with the paper so that you get these nice um, mottled sort of uh, textural effects on the picture. So I've left that to dry um, at this point and moved on over to some of the foliage. Now this technique I was I was putting paint on the brush and just dragging it, dragging the brush. I showed I showed somebody who asked what brush it was. It was a small round brush. I'm just dragging the brush and then a little bit of stippling with some paler colour and I carried that on up around the bushy or the sorry the tree that the leaves I did earlier so lots of stippling up there and then I think I go back in with some sort of orangey spray and the reason for that is that this tree had a little bit of a kind of orangey colour to it so I've managed to achieve that there and then I go back in with the old colour pencil adding in some various marks lines to create this sense of shadow within the picture and you saw me just there adding some blue over the reflections. That's to just slightly darken again, darken down some of those, um, some of the building, give it this kind of uh, reflective effect again. So I'm just adding in the window panes and just below each window pane, there are like little brush strokes, a few little brush strokes just underneath there which is where the water had distorted the reflection slightly. So it's starting to get much better as far as reflections go. Carry on with the colour pencil. One thing that I've added to this, I suppose, this photograph, is there aren't so many colours. Um, for example, in the water at the back there, you can see this really lovely deep blue. That blue wasn't so much there in the original so I'm adding also adding in in some cases some watery colors or some colors that I prefer to use to sort of zing it up and put a little bit of a stamp on the picture from the point of view of the artist so lots of fun really that this is where you can start to apply and add some ideas of your own to the picture. This was quite satisfying to do here as well. There were some weeds on the edge of the bank of the river or lake. Uh, so I just painted that in with some pale green and then scratched it out again. And here there's an orangey area in the bushes. So I put that in too. And I'm stippling again on those top bushes. Uh, but this time I noticed that the branches or the, or the um, leaves were kind of a little bit directional. They kind of pointed up towards the top left hand corner. So I put them in, and match those marks there. Um, and then I come back into it with some, as you can see, some paler greens. And then I go back in again with some quite light um, splatters of pale green to emphasise the shape and form of the bushes a little bit, or the tree, I should say. Doing the same sort of thing over here with this tree. Making sure the form and the shape of the tree is there and the edge of the bush or the tree has these little stippily bits again to represent all of those lovely leaves and things in there. So 
not splattering again. So very much um, taking these ideas from having seen Kurt Jackson's work. And this bush here was just a little bit lighter, so I put the pale minty sort of colour, squashed, uh, wiped it away, and worked back into it a bit of splattering again. And leave some weeds on the edge of the bank as it goes around. So all in all, coming together quite nicely. I do do a little bit more after the class. And I could have been done a little bit more after that as well, of course. But um, as a little experiment, a lot of fun. And it darkened down the shadows in the uh, foreground on the water. And here I do quite a bit of uh, scratching away of the paint once I've applied it as well. Um, and I decided that that, um, as I said earlier in the film, I said that I didn't think I thought that the houses had this kind of glowing quality which wasn't really showing so much because I'd worked into those houses, the size of them, quite a lot to, to experiment with texture. Um, but then I realised the tonal quality of that orange wasn't quite there so I've gone back into it a little bit and hopefully got a closer match. Add in a few more clouds in. And I think the last bit I do in this particular video is um, putting in the yeah, the plants that are in the water just towards the front there, the reeds I suppose you would call them. So a nice little study inspired by Kurt Jackson. A lot of fun to do and um, I hope you enjoyed it. There we go. So that took us up to the end of the following lesson. So thank you so much for watching and uh, let me know if you've got any questions and I'll be happy to answer.